to being the best. The difficulty we have to conquer is we work on night and day shifts rather than normal working hours, so that we have to sacrifice a bit, personal life-wise. I mean, we cannot just go drinking and have fun as much as we want to. We have to make sure we rest well before we come to work. Driving a container port crane is like fishing for a prize in a carnival game. Except the prize weighs two and a half tons, and that's empty. Sitting in a cab meters up, the operator has to maneuver the crane's lifter, called a spreader, into position over each container. Then lower it by eye and by hand. When the spreader's in place, he triggers the spreader's automated locks that grip the container and hoists it up and over the deck onto the dock below, lining it up precisely with the truck that will carry it away. And then do it again and again and again. And if you think unloading is tough, try loading. To load a ship, a crane operator has to position a 20-foot container onto pins on deck and slide it precisely into grooves built into the cargo hold, so containers won't move at sea. That's like trying to set an elephant down on a coin from 50 meters up, and a crane driver doesn't have all day to get it right. If containers move too slowly, ship owners fall behind schedule and lose money. But if they move too fast, they can swing out of control, endangering cargoes, people, and cranes. And a bumped container could mean damaged goods inside. So crane drivers have to develop an instinct for loading and unloading at exactly the right speed. The cranes put the containers onto trucks, which move them from the dock to the container yard. At the yard, rubber tire gantry cranes take the containers off the tractors and put them on the ground. But there's a lot more to this process than just heavy lifting. Shipping containers look alike. And unless you can match their numbers with the list, there's no way to tell them apart. From the moment they leave the Gudrun Mursk, three thousand containers have to be precisely tracked. A misrouted container means unhappy customers and a bad reputation for Yongshan. A lost container is unthinkable, but it's unthinkable thoughts like these that keep operations manager Shi Minhua fully focused throughout his shift. More than anywhere, the burden of success or failure rests squarely on his shoulders. For the duration of his shift, he'll bear the ultimate responsibility for keeping the operation on time and on track. The port runs 24 hours. We are under a lot of pressure to work fast, but we try our best to fulfill our service promises to our customers. If anything does go wrong, the buck stops with Shi Minhua, and there's plenty that could go wrong. Before a ship sails. The shipping company's computers analyze the contents and destinations of its several thousand containers, and assign every container a specific place on board. In the first port, containers are the ones on top, and the last port's containers are on the bottom. It's a pretty complex mathematical equation. If port operators make a mistake or fall behind schedule. 
they might have to ask permission to load containers in places other than the ones the computer assigned them. And that's not a question a ship's captain wants to hear. Containers loaded in the wrong places will confuse unloading in the next port. Badly loaded containers could make the ship unstable on the open sea. And Yangshan's competitors, Hong Kong and Singapore, each handle over 20 million containers a year with an error rate of less than 1%. All good reasons why no one at Yangshan wants to rock the boat. Fortunately, Yangshan has a brain to match its brawn. A cutting-edge control system developed by the port of Shanghai. The operation control room has a highly developed CCTV supervising system, which can help to detect any potential problems. We communicate through walkie-talkie. There are laptop computers on the wharf that receive a detailed operation plan delivered by the computer system. Cranes, trucks and rubber tire gantry cranes all have cab displays electronically linked to the port control room. So crane operators and drivers know exactly which containers they're moving, when to move them, and where they go. The trucks receive wireless orders from the computer terminal in the operation control room. Portable mini computers in the trucks display instructions on what to do and where to go. The trucks we use here are some of the best. They are equipped to transport containers on the left and the right. And the driver's cab has windows on three sides, which allows the driver to see a lot more. The Yangshan system maximizes efficiency. Sending ship after ship back to sea on schedule. Making crews and owners happy. So they're trying to sail at a specific time to meet a, a berthing window at another port down the road. Delays are just not, you know, not, not acceptable. The unloading and loading goes on all night. and past the break of day. 20 hours after she docked, the Gudrun Musk departs Yangshan. Leaving behind 3,000 containers filled with imported goods. Taking with her 2,000 others filled with exports. Xi Minhua and the Yangshan team can finally relax and call it a day. A very long day. But Yangshan's job isn't over yet. 3,000 shipping containers have to be delivered. Customers have waited weeks for the Gudrun Musk to bring them across the ocean. sitting on an island 32 kilometers out to sea. To compete with other world-class container ports, Yangshan must move over 20 million 